This is IBM Liberty ZOS Connect demonstration one showing how to uh, add to the config a application called Context which is located in CICS and is based on COBOL uh, and how to reach the application using uh, ZOS Connect and the WOLA interface. Let's have a look at the Context application program first. This is a COBOL program. This is JCL and source for it. Notice there are some debug statements at the top here. And then there's some business logic for adding, deleting, creating, and updating contacts. If we look at the COBOL copybook for requests, request message looks like this. This has this structure to it. If we look at response, response message has this structure to it. Close to the same thing with an action character here followed by some data. So the action is either create, read, update, or delete. Uh, and then followed by the data itself. In the response you notice these EIV response codes coming back that tell us whether it was successful or not. If we look at the utility, the ZOS Connect utility, to generate the artifacts that are needed to do the data transformation, you'll notice that the utility is running a procedure called BBG LS to JS. This is provided by ZOS Connect, and these are the parameters that go into it. You'll notice the request member is the first copybook, the request copybook, and the response is the second one. You'll notice also that the JSON request schema and response schema names are located here in the file system. There's a log file and there's also the bind file, which is critical for doing the data transformation, this bind file. So running this job will generate these artifacts in the file system. If we look at the file system on our server and we go to the bind files directory, we'll see there's a contact service bind here. And if we look at the JSON directory, we'll see there's a contact service request JSON and contact service response JSON. If we open up the config for the server, which is basically opening up the server XML, we see here a server XML for any Liberty server is what it would look like, a feature manager element with the features that are installed. You'll see there's a ZOS Connect, a ZOS Security, a WOLA, all active in the current feature list. And if we scroll down, you'll start to see the ZOS Connect service definitions here. The first one is OLA CV02, contact lookup, contact update. If we scroll down further, you'll see the ZOS Connect service definition for contact service here. And the associated WOLA, the service ref here points to WOLA contacts and the associated WOLA config. OLA serve and contacts. OLA serve is the WOLA register name of the link server running in CICS and context is the target program name we're going to call. Notice the service description, sports talent agency, maintain athlete contact data. And also notice the data X form here, X form JSON to byte. This is pointing at an element above. If we go look at it, this is X form JSON to byte. And this is the element, only one of these is needed in the server XML, which defines where the bind file location is UWAS test bind files and the suffix and where the request and response schema locations are and the suffix for those file names. Again, the file name is just the service name plus that suffix. That's it for the config. Very basic, straightforward. With the server running on ZOS right now, we can open up any browser and we can try and access the service or the ZOS Connect servlet You'll notice it's here. The server demo demos IBM ZOS Connect services. We simply do a get call on this, and you'll notice we're challenged for an ID. And this is a ZOS SAF ID. This is a ZOS security ID that we must enter the password for. Log in, and now we basically see the list of services that ZOS Connect knows about coming back as JSON. 
scroll down a little bit, look through the list, we see Kicks File X, we see Contact Update, Contact Lookup, we see Contact Service, the one that we've entered with the service description, Sports Talent Agency, talent agency uh, Maintain Athlete Contact Data. If we click on this URL, which is the service name itself, this does a get, and we'll get back the configuration for Contact Service. In that configuration is the Data Transform Provider name that we just looked at, and the WOLA config, which is the register name, and the service name, which ties us over to the Kix environment and to the Kix program we're going to. If we switch and bring up our, J our JavaScript scenario here, here we're running a node.js server on this local machine, and the JavaScript is running out of there, localhost 8080. So this JavaScript is running here on this local machine. This is just a a more formal uh, look at the service list here. The service JSON list is below, but this is a, a fixed up view of the list. And you'll see contact service here. If we click on contact service, you'll notice that the light went green here, indicating contact service is now active. And you'll see the config for contact service as we looked at before. If we click on status, you'll see that the service status is started. Request schema shows us the schema uh, for the input request, right? And this is this maps to the COBOL copybook we looked at earlier. If we bring that up and put it next to it, we can see here that all of the structures within the COBOL copybook are represented in the request schema. And the request schema provides us the ability to generate a JSON request that maps to this. Likewise for the response schema, this is the response mapping. And again, these are retrievable with action equals get response or get request schema. A simple HTTP get against this URL returns these payloads. Looking at statistics, we have an invoke request count of six. We keep local statistics. Providers can also keep local statistics and pass them back up to ZOS Connect where they'll be returned on this call. If we look at an invoke scenario, if we go over to a CICS terminal and we look at a CICS application, the one here that's actually maintaining the vSAM file, we can browse the contents of the file with the abrw command and you'll notice that we've got a few records here 10 is Derek Jeter, Mickey Mantle, David Wright, Michael Jordan all athletes and some information about each if we wanted to look at more detail on the first one we can this is an inquiry on Derek Jeter and you see the details against Derek Jeter why don't we go retrieve this data using ZOS Connect and our JavaScript application we would do a action read R. We would put in the key that represents Derek Jeter here. And we would just do a go, which is essentially doing a put or a post with the action equals invoke call. And you'll notice that the responding result matches what we have in our kicks environment here. Derek Jeter, shortstop number two. Let's make a change to this record. I'm just going to cut and paste it. So it comes in as request data. And I'm going to move Derek to another position on the field. We'll move him to third base as a change. And we'll change the action from R to U for update. We do a a call or a go and we see the position has changed in the comment field third base number two if we come back over here and look at the on the CICS side at Derek Dieter again we find he's now located at third base so let's remove Derek Jeter from the file he is on his way out retiring we'll do a delete the delete came back successful 
we go in and look for Derek Jeter, record number 10 is now gone. Let's add Derek, Derek back to the, to the file. We'll just do a, a create call with all the same information here, and we'll put him back on shortstop. Create went through, EIB response zero. And if we come back in, tech check for Jarrett, Derek again. We see Derek is back and he's back at shortstop. So we've demonstrated a read, an update, a create, and a delete using ZOS Connect to call across to CICS from a JavaScript application running in a browser. Hopefully you found this demonstration useful.